Hello fellow developers, and in this video, we will give you a demonstration on how to create this simple login section in Power Apps. We will start in creating our background through stock images in Power Apps, then add an SVG logo. After that, we will guide you on how to beautify your classic input text controls, allow users to add their password or credentials in the app, and create a button that will trigger the entry of your users in the app. Now, if you're ready, let us start building the login section of your app. But before that, we would like to thank all subscribers and all your comments in our previous upload. Without your comments, our team won't be able to know that these kinds of contents are what really matters to you. We want to hear more from you and please continue in supporting this channel. First, let us start building the section UI by adding a stock image. The process is really simple. Go to Properties, then under Background Image, click the drop-down option, then select Stock Images. Once clicked, a new window will pop up and will show all images for you to choose from. In the search box, type in the word Mountain and feel free to select any images for your background. Once you have selected your preferred image, click Insert. The image will automatically be embedded in your app, then select Fill under Image Position for the image to cover the whole section. Do not forget to rename your section. In this example, we named our section as Login. Proper naming of every element is one of the best practices in app development to help you in understanding part of your app. Now, in this step, we will lessen the image background crispness and intensity. To do that, go to Insert, select Rectangle and manually resize it and cover the whole image. Change the color background of the shape to hex code 284974 and opacity of 86. This will give you a blue and darker shade effect of your background. After completing the background image step, we will now create our login form for our users. We will start by inserting container in the middle part of the section. You can manually adjust the X, Y coordinates, including the height and width of the container. Do not forget that you have two options to adjust any element. The first one is by manually sizing and editing every Power Apps elements, while the other one is directly editing properties pane of the selected element. And then let us change the color fill with hex code 15284C and adjust the border radius and border color of the container. Once we have our container set up to group all elements for user login, let us try to add SVG as our icon. We highly recommend to refer to svgrepo.com. This website contains more than 500,000 open and licensed SVG and icons where you can use for any projects or apps. The site allows you search and copy the SVG code of the selected icon. Once you have copied the SVG code, open a notepad, paste the SVG code, then replace all double quote characters in the code and replace it to a single quote characters only. This will allow Power Apps to read the SVG code with no issue. Going back to Power Apps, go to Insert and search for Image Element and place it directly inside the container. From here, in the properties of image element added, paste the SVG code with single quotes only. Then add the additional function double quote data colon image slash SVG plus XML semicolon UTF-8, then comma, double quote, ampersand, then add function encode URL and open parenthesis and close parenthesis at the end of the function. Don't forget to match the color of your SVG to the color of your background. We can achieve this by editing the SVG fill. For simplicity, we will manually edit the hex code of the SVG of the last two lines to white, while for the first line of the logo, we will change the line of the color from black to blue. Now we have our SVG inside the container. We are now ready to add the label and input text box for email and password. 
First, let us build our labels. Go to Insert, Add Label, and place it inside the container. Change the text to Email, and change the text of the color to hex code 56758F, which is a bluish-gray color for our labels. Then we will change the X position to 0 and left padding of 33. You will see that the text will be indented from the left border. Now we can add our input text box. Go to Insert and select Text Input. Once added, we will manually resize the width and height of the text box in the middle of the container. Then let's remove the background, hover and press Fill Color including the border's color of the text input element. Do not forget to remove the default value of text input to a blank value. And in the lower part of the text input, let us add a rectangle shape which will serve as our underline. Also, to guide the users about the email and password text box, we will add hint texts for easier visibility of every text input. Since we already have a well set up UI for our username text box, we can just simply copy and paste all elements such as labels, text input, and rectangle shape, and we'll just place and rename these elements for our password. One of the best properties in Power Apps is that it allows developers to select mode. Under properties, change the mode from single line to password. This property will mask every input of your users. In this step, we will add our button. To do that, let's go to Insert, Select Button, then place it in the middle of the container and align the width of the button to the width of other elements. This button will be used to trigger an event or action to allow the users to log in the application. Change the text of the button to Login. You can change the properties of every element in this section, and feel free to play around with formatting your button colors and fills that can match the whole vibe of the section. At the last part, we may want to add a button for our users for them to click in case our users forgot their password. To do that, we will just simply copy and paste any labels inside the container. Then, we will just rename the text to a simple instruction to trigger a user action. You can further change the formatting of this element, aligned with the formattings of other elements, such as color, paddings, and spacing. Now let's trigger action to the login button. First, take note that your app can only be accessed once you share your apps to your users. To do that, click Share button to your Power Apps editor or in the main page of Power Apps under Apps menu, search for your application, then find Share option. Then it will automatically prompt you to add your users to the app, manually add all emails and send them invite. You can turn on or turn off the email invitation to new users. It is highly suggested to create a personalized email to invite all users rather than just sending them a Power Apps notification alone. Then automatically get the email of the current user by typing user.email in the username text box. This will help your users not to manually type their email address and proceed in typing their personalized password. For the password validation, you will need to create a simple database or reference. In this demo, we will use Excel file and import it directly to our app for simple use case. To upload the Excel file, go to Power Apps and search for Import from Excel and manually search for the Excel file in your local drive. Once successfully imported, you will need to select for the table name. In this example, the name of our table is Database Pass. Again, as best practice in Power Apps development, rename your text inputs as text username and text password for easier coding. Finally, in the login button, we will use a switch function. The idea is that we will create a lookup in the database and look for the corresponding password of the username provided by the user. Now, if the password typed in is matched with the looked up value, then we will pass a notification to the users that their login has been successfully verified by the app.
Other than the first scenario, any incorrect inputs for both username and password will not be accepted, and a failure notification will show to the users. Don't forget to always save and publish your app to test it in production stage and avoid any loss of data for any interruption. Now, let's test the app. You can see that we have our email automatically identified by login section. Then if we try to add any password, a failure prompt will show. If both username and password is correct, then a success notification will be prompted. And that is it for this video, hope you like this content, and please support this channel by subscribing, liking and sharing your comments and question to the comment section.